Let's spar. All right. Ryan, this is the part that we debate a little bit. Um, but with me today is Ryan Corkum, high school teacher. And as my guest, Ryan Corkum, you get to decide if you want to go first or second in these sparring matches. Now, the first speaker is going to speak for one minute. And the advantage is you get to speak your conscience. So you can actually say what you feel about the topic. And you have one minute to build up your case. The second minute will belong to the second speaker who, who has to respond for one minute uninterrupted. And the third minute is what we call the bare knuckle round or the sparring match, where we then get to ask questions and interrupt each other and just try to, you know, joust a little bit and spar. Should there be a law that forbids marriage under 30? So we're talking about people getting married too soon. Should the government step in and forbid under 30s to get married? So take that off their plate altogether. I, I do not believe that there should be a law that bans marriage under 30 because that takes away people's um, freedom and, and freedom to make their own life choices. Um, you know, marriage is something that should be a very positive event in someone's life, an exciting event. And by, I believe people's brains, they're fully developed by the age of 25. And so are we saying that because once someone's brain is fully developed, what excuse is there to say they cannot be married um, before they reach the age of 30? Uh, scientifically, I can't think of a reason why. Um, if if the marriage doesn't work out, then okay, then that's on them. It's not the end of the world. They can, you know, try and make it work. Um, if they need to get a divorce, so be it. That happens all the time in the world. Um, people do recover. So, no, I don't believe they should do that. All right. Yeah, I, I agree with you and certain, you know, that the brain is more or less fully developed by age 25. So it's not a cognitive problem, but it is an emotional thing. Like they're, they're, and when you get married, it's almost like, you know, you, you're leading with your heart, especially people who get married young. So a lot of people are not getting married for good intellectual cognitive reasons in the first place. They're getting married because of a heart feeling. Uh, maybe they're in lust with somebody. And if you look at the stats, I think, you know, most marriages that fail um, are people that are under 30. So it's that demographic um, is getting a lot of divorces. You say people recover. I agree. It's not the end of the world. But why put yourself through all that turmoil? Why not focus on school and imagine how much more solid your foundation would be if marriage was off the table when you're young and you had all that energy to focus on school. But you would disagree. I would disagree. Uh, I believe life should be led by emotion. It should be messy. It, people should be able to fall in love and have their heart broken. That's what life is about. That's what gives life meaning and excitement. And if you yeah, take that what away... Would you say to, to the kids who's, who, you know, when, you, when you're young and you have your heart crushed, it could lead to some terrible tragedy. And so, you know, what do you say to the parents of kids who, who commit suicide because of heartbreak? I think there's a lot more going on if someone commits suicide because of heartbreak than, than just, um, you know, that they broke up with someone. There's much more deeper issues there. And that's just the surface, I think. Um, well, that's an extreme example. And... Um, I just think life is too short to be afraid of, of making mistakes. Um, you go for it and you, you live and learn. Very good. All right. Well, for all intents and purposes, I'm, I'm with you. You took my side. I'm with you on this question. but um, And you're right. I, I resorted to a, a cheap trick, an extreme example, and you called me out. Are you sure you're not a debater, Ryan? <laughs> well, you could easily I, I've always uh, enjoyed it. Round two. Well, let's go to the field of battle. You said you're a fan of history. I'm sure you've thought about wars before and um, maybe imagined yourself fighting on the battlefield. But let's transport ourselves to the battlefield. Is it better to be the guy like leading the charge, the making the decisions, the sergeant in the field? No, we're not talking about generals 
in the back room. I'm talking about on the field. Is it better to be the leader or to be the soldier following the leader in that situation? Do you want to go first or second? Um, I'll go second this time. All right. What am I going to say? Hmm. All right. You know, if I was in this unfortunate situation, and I think I would like to be the leader, because um, I'm not saying that I have that kind of quality uh, uh, that or, or what it takes to be a great battlefield leader, but I'd sure rather have the control of that situation in my hands rather than someone else, because um, just sort of deferring to someone else's leadership automatically, we don't know what kind of person that other leader is going to be. It could be someone that's far less um, capable or have uh, affinity for leadership than me. And as a teacher, you know, I'm a natural leader. Um, I think a lot of the the leaders on, on the actual battlefield, and in, 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 in if you study war history, were people like me. And uh, people who, who had a natural um, predisposition to lead um, a lot of teachers ended up being battlefield leaders. So I think, you know, in that moment, I'd rather depend on my own, uh, 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 I guess, feelings and 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 uh, and, conv and abilities than some stranger. Um, I can definitely appreciate wanting to be in control, especially in such a high pressurized situation as as war, where your life is literally on the line. Um, however, let's say that, you know, you, you are thrust into a position of leadership and you make an error and someone's life is taken because of your error. I think that is a tremendously, I can't even express in words how, how traumatic that could be and how can you move forward as a leader when, you know, you have the lives of these men, women with you in your hands, um, you could crack, and then, then, then what's going to happen if you can't carry forward? I also feel that people who are in these leadership positions are there for a reason, and I feel like um, they're not strangers. You go through boot camp, and uh, yeah. you should be able to I trust think them. in the heat of battle, I mean, it's so messy that their errors are going to happen irregardless. And, and so I'd rather the error happen on my part because I know myself, and I, I'm a compassionate person. I would put other people's before me and uh, and I wouldn't make um, rash judgments. And so I think if an error is gonna be made, it's better to be made by someone like me than someone who's just scared out of their wits or maybe some narcissist out there on the battlefield. At the same time, because battle is so intense and there's so much to, to think about, um, I feel as a, as a follower, you have less to, to think about and worry about. You can act more on instinct and at the end of the day, you, I, I want to survive. Um, yeah. I want to be, well, go home. I want to survive family. too, but a, that's why I want to be the leader because I know myself. I know I'm the kind of person that will rise to the occasion, that that will will meet the moment, and I can't be sure that some other random person is going to be like that. All right, well done, well done. Fair um, how do you really feel about it? Uh, for speaking for myself. I would rather be a follower, just just personally. Um, I don't like. I know I'm a teacher, and of course I'm now the leader. But I don't. I don't want to be a department head. I would never want to be a, a principal. I just. I have faith in people, and I just want to be able to to explore and do my thing and not worry about the big picture. Um, yeah. I leave that for other people to do, and I don't like. I'm uncomfortable at times giving, I guess, commands and, and roles to my peers. I'd rather just take what, I, what I'm given and, and make the best of it. That's just for myself. Do you remember, my, you, do you remember a young man called uh, Fernando Casanova from Pickering College yes. days? Yes. I remember he was the well. captain of my debate team for a little while. And I remember that clearly one, that's, I think, the reason I put this question in my program, because he told me one time, he goes, you know what, sir? I would, I would follow you in battle. And I was like, wow, well, that was like one of the greatest compliments I ever heard. <laughs> Absolutely. So That's that huge. made me think about it. Um, all right. We're moving right along, Ryan. Third round. Okay. All right. It's about teaching. So you, you and I are both uh, have some insight into this topic. When teachers lose control of their class, do they have only themselves to blame? 
You want to go first or second on this? Um, I'll go first, I guess. All right. So teachers do not have only themselves to blame because as a teacher, as one individual, you can only do so much. You can only um, set expectations so much. You can only redirect students so much. You can only, you know, control your class up to a point. Um, you, you lay that foundation of, of proper classroom management. You go over expectations. You practice with students. Um, you discipline fairly and consistently. At the end of the day, you're surrounded by a group of human beings who have the freedom to make their own choices. And for whatever reason, if a student blows up in class and throws a pen at someone, um, yes, you, you can you can try your best to regain control of the class. But if someone gets something tossed at them or a fight breaks out, students are human beings and they're only going to naturally react in that way. You can only do so much. At this one point, person. I agree that, yes, it's a very psychological job and, and your students have their own minds and, and they're able to say and do anything they want. However, you do have the control as the teacher. You say there's only so much that we can do, but we can do everything. We can do anything. We can have so much more free reign than the students. And so we are allowed to handle situations however we see fit. We're allowed to send kids to the vice principal's office. We're allowed to actually um, suggest that they get suspended. None of this they can do to us. So we are in full control as teachers. And with that power comes great responsibility. And so I do think that, you know, and the other point is there are teachers who have full control of their classroom. And so it's just like when, with kids, and if one kid can get 100% and can do it, that means that it can be done. So if one teacher can 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 fully control their kids, that means it can be done. And then perhaps those who are not doing it haven't sort of, you know, risen to their to their full potential. Every classroom is different. Every classroom has unique individuals. And to say that one one teacher is able to control their class is a is an overgeneralization. Um, and I've been in these classes where students are very easy to, to work with. And I've been in classes where uh, not so much. But you um, have to the meet question... the moment. You have to read the situation and change on the fly. You have to go home and think about it and make a, and come back with a battle plan. You can't just treat every class like, you know, the same. And just because it worked in one class doesn't mean it's going to work in another. Absolutely, I agree with that. The question states, when teachers lose control of their class, do they have themselves to blame? Yes, you can learn from experiences and you can send students to the office and meet with them after school. But the question states, at, at, in the moment, the teachers yes. lose control, do they have themselves to blame? The answer is no. But the teacher's main job is to figure out the highest value of the student and speak to that. And if you can do that, they will fall into line. And that's how, that's how I feel about eventually, it. Eventually, eventually, yes. All right. Any any after thoughts of this one? Um, this is a tough one because I've I've been in those situations, um, where a student has flipped out and has has thrown things through the classroom, and I had to evacuate the students at that point, um, and and call them in down and wait for the student to decompress. Right. Um, and it doesn't seem fair so to put that happen. on yourself, right? That's the student, uh, you know, you're just reacting yeah. and, and, and to their meltdown. Yeah, um, but I think a, a good teacher should, um, you need to build trust with your class and build relationships with the students. And I think that's where that being able to control these situations comes from. If the, if the students trust you and you have that relationship with them, um, it's much easier to manage when when problems arise and if they see you only as an authority figure and they don't have that trust or personal connection. Well, another point of agreement, 100%. And that's the part I think that some teachers fail to do, which then mm -hmm. puts the, the, the onus on them because a lot of teachers don't do that legwork, that foundational work the, uh, of gaining trust and gaining an affinity and gaining respect in the good old fashioned way, not through fear, but through good, <laughs> through and just positive reinforcement and so on and so on. Yes. So once, when something happens, you can much, you can manage it much easier if, if everybody loves and respects you. And, and not only that, but what people don't realize is 
if you have a problem student who's not willing to love and respect you, if you have 25 other kids in the class that are on board with you, they will also work on that student. It's you know what I mean. Absolutely. You get yep. all, all all of a sudden you're in like this this allyship <laughs> with with your, your your students. All right. Yep.